Hi, this is R.D. Dykeman. I'm the producer of Diabetes University with Dr. Bernstein. Today, Dr. Bernstein is busy with patients, but I would like to do a quick video for you. And the subject of the video is, what is carbohydrate? So as you know, carbohydrate is this uh, very important thing. Dr. Bernstein recommends that we eat very little of it. In particular, uh, no grains, starch, sugars, or fruits. And it occurred to me that uh, it might be useful to make a video discussing what carbohydrate really is. Let me introduce myself a little bit first. Uh, I'm not diabetic. My son is um, David. He's a 12-year-old type 1 diabetic, and he's been diabetic for about three years. And uh, when Dave was diagnosed, like most parents, we were told to eat a lot of carbohydrate, 40 to 50 grams a meal, something like 15 grams in, uh, of snacks. And uh, when, when our doctor was discussing with us how to do diabetes management in the crash course that everybody gets when you're first diagnosed, uh, Dave was told that uh, carbohydrates basically make his blood sugar go up and insulin makes it go down. And Dave said, well, uh, I just won't eat carbohydrate. And I said, uh, no, Dave, you have to eat carbohydrate for, for energy and to grow. Um, and I think that's what most people believe. And uh, that's wrong. We're going to talk mostly about how to avoid this. And what is that? Those are Dave's blood sugars uh, when he was eating lots of carbohydrate for energy and growth. And what happened? Well, it might be hard to see the axis of the plot. It goes up to 350, uh, and it goes down to 50. So Dave's blood sugars, when he was eating this magical energy and growth uh, stuff called carbohydrate, went from a normal blood sugar, which is between maybe 70 and 100 for a kid, and should be 70 all the time if you're not eating a bunch of junk um, or in the 70s. Uh, Dave's went up to 350, and that's about five times normal. What was he eating? Uh, he was eating what I thought was healthy stuff like oatmeal and uh, fruit, maybe some bananas. And, um, well, it's pretty easy to figure out what this kind of uh, blood sugars are going to do to a kid. If you look on the internet, you can read about the effects on the brain from hyperglycemia. You can even find new articles that discuss uh, the stunting of growth from high blood sugars. Um, and of course, there's all the complications that we know about amputation, dialysis, um, uh, de decreased mortality, I think 12 years, something like that. Um, uh, much higher risk of cardiovascular disease and, uh, and not only that you don't feel good uh, uh, when you're having these kinds of high blood sugars you might go into DKA more in fact we know that uh, the higher your A1C is the like more likely you are to go into DKA and you might have some severe hypoglycemia that requires you to eat lots of carbohydrate just to stop yourself from having a seizure so, uh, carbohydrate makes your sugars go up, and um, but we feel like I guess there's some need for it. Now, what is it? Let's talk. Let's let's talk just about what carbohydrate is. So, what do you do? You go to Google, and this isn't a this this video is not supposed to be a lecture in biochemistry, okay? But uh, uh, the basics are this. Um, of, of course, it, it can be a little more complicated, but the general idea is that complex carbohydrates, now we've been kind of programmed uh, to believe that there's something magical about complex carbohydrates. What are they? Well, 
Here is a diagram of the molecule glucose. And here's another diagram of the molecule sucrose. Uh, they look a lot alike. Of course, the sucrose looks like, it basically looks like two glucoses uh, married together. Not quite. It's a little more complicated than that. Um, as I said, it's not a biochemistry lesson. But let's go down to complex carbohydrates. Now, there's a lot of different uh, molecular uh, uh, forms of complex carbohydrate, but they basically all look the same. And what do they look like? They look like chains of simple sugar molecules, all attached together. Okay, and that's uh, that's what car carbohydrates are. They're chains of simple sugars. Now, diabetes is a disease where we've lost the ability to metabolize sugar. So, uh, the question is, why are we eating sugars? What about proteins? And what about fats? Proteins slightly raise blood sugar and fats less so. Um, shouldn't we be getting our energy and our growth from those foods? And that's the argument that Dr. Bernstein makes, and he is correct. Um, we don't need to eat, aside from some phytonutrients in the fibrous vegetables, uh, uh, which are carbo, we don't need any uh, sugar. Our body makes in fact, sugar, if you are a diabetic, you know this fact because uh, if you forget to take your insulin, your blood sugar goes up even if you don't eat. So your liver is constantly making glucose. Um, you don't need to eat dietary glucose. Okay, that's the biochemistry lecture. Um, what are we going to do today? Uh, if you look on the internet, there's a debate between Dr. Bernstein and a dietitian. And Dr. Bernstein does an interesting experiment. And this uh, was a big deal to me when I first saw it. So what, what does he do? Uh, the dietitian on uh, the right is um, saying that diabetics should eat uh, carbohydrate. And in the middle of the debate, Dr. Bernstein does something really cool. He pulls out a dye sticks. And I have a, a pack right here, and we're going to use them. He pulls it out, and he uh, takes a piece of bread, and he uses the dye sticks uh, to test for the presence of glucose uh, in that food. So what happens is these dye sticks were used a long time ago by diabetics to test glucose in their urine. So you'd pee on it and uh, you'd see if you were uh, spilling, if you were above the renal threshold and spilling glucose into your urine. Well, um, you don't really need to do that anymore because everyone uses a blood sugar meter. I don't think anyone's particularly using these. But they do have some interesting um, applications. If you take um, one of these uh, and you're Supposedly, uh, yeah, let's suppose you're at a restaurant. You want to you want to have a diet coke, and the waitress comes, and you don't trust what she's giving you. Um, you might dip this into a diet coke, and if it turns black, uh, you you know you've got um, uh, a non-diet drink. If it stays uh, green, then you've got a diet drink, and I'm going to demonstrate that a little bit later. But basically, what these do is they detect glucose. Okay, so I have a little glucose tab. If you look at the, 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 the dye sticks, it's green. Okay. So I'm chewing out my glucose tab. And I just used a little bit of it. Uh, you're going to let this sit still for about mm, 10 seconds. The reaction's occurring. Let me hold up um, a good one. Now, what do you see? Let me see, where is my camera? Yeah, this is the one that I haven't used yet. And what happened? It turned black and brown. It turned color in the presence of glucose, okay? So, what we're gonna do is we're going to do some experiments. We know that glucose raises your blood sugar. 
So we're going to do some experiments um, with car complex carbohydrates that we've been told to eat and see what happens when we chew up these foods and put them on a dye sticks. Okay? And um, now uh, I would go to the refrigerator to get some of these foods, but since my son is a diabetic, we don't use carbohydrate in the house. Um, we have some spinach and um, some other vegetables and some nuts that contain carbohydrate. But look at that, it's black. But um, those foods are so fibrous that um, the, the conversion to glucose uh, when you chew on it is too slow. You need to fully digest it. It takes a long time for like a, a spinach leaf to chew, uh, to turn into uh, glucose. What we're gonna be after is um, uh, bread, uh, like whole grains, and um, other kinds of foods that you're encouraged to eat um, when you become a diabetic. And we're gonna see what happens, just like Dr. Bernstein did in the debate, when you eat these foods. So, I don't have them at home, those foods, so we're gonna have to go to the supermarket. So we're off to the supermarket. By the way, uh, I still haven't gone to the market yet, but here's our stick from the glucose tab. And um, before I went to the market, I'm having a little breakfast. So, what am I eating? Some eggs and some sausage. So, good time to do an experiment with protein and fat. Sorry, it's kind of gross. Now, we'll let that uh, do its thing for a few minutes. And uh, about the energy comment with carbohydrate. You ever eaten an omelet before? Like a spinach and cheese omelet? Okay. You feel full and satisfied afterwards? Are you lacking energy after you eat an omelet? No. Why is that? <clears throat> well, protein and fat. They're not helium, you know. They're not inert substances. Fat is not an inert substance. Fat is energy. And we store fat on our bodies for energy in the form of saturated fat. So, uh, from an evolutionary perspective, you would expect that fat to, is a pretty good energy source. And it is. Eat an omelet, a big omelet, four eggs, some cheese, a little spinach in the morning, and see what happens. You're going to have plenty of energy. What's going to happen if you eat your bowl of uh, cereal and skim milk? You're going to be hungry in about an hour and a half. Okay. Still green. Okay. No sugar in eggs. Okay. I'm off to the market. All right. It's a beautiful day out. And we're off to the grocery store backing up out of my driveway and we're gonna go buy some carbohydrate now what kind of carbohydrate am I looking for remember we're doing a video on complex carbohydrate so we know that glucose uh, is gonna turn those sticks black but what we're looking for is uh, if those complex carbohydrates are nothing more than just the glucose chains that I showed you in the molecular diagram and if you are a diabetic and you test your blood sugar um, right after you eat some complex carbohydrate and I'm not really talking about fibrous vegetables which take a long time to break down I'm talking more about the fast-acting stuff the grains and the starches that they tell you to eat uh, you'll notice when you test your blood sugar after eating those things that it'll almost instantaneously be sky high. And um, what we're going to look at is we're going to look at if those foods are almost instantly turning into glucose. And why would that be? Well, when you eat, your saliva already starting to digest the food that you eat. And there's enzymes in your mouth called uh, amylase, I believe. Salivary amylase. And what salivary amylase is going to do with those complex carbohydrates 
is it's going to break them down into glucose while you're chewing them in your mouth. And uh, that's what we're going to see. We're going to test that with the dye sticks. Can we? So anyway, we're driving and uh, I'll talk to you in a minute. Okay, here we are at the uh, grocery store. So we're going to go in and buy some complex carbohydrates. The first thing I got is some white rice. Okay, we're going to try that. And also those these, I haven't had these in a long time. Potato chips. start the experiment. So what I'm going to do is eat the food, put it in my mouth, let my saliva work on it a little bit. Remember I told you in the car ride over to the supermarket, the salivary amylase is going to do its thing. And uh, now the straight glucose tab was an instantaneous thing. The reaction with the salivary amylase, yeah, it might take a half a minute or a minute. We might have to wait and we'll watch these sticks uh, slowly turn brown. Uh, or, or maybe even instantaneously with some of the food. But the, the food will cause, will react with the saliva and it's going to turn uh, into glucose and the dye sticks are going to turn brown. Okay, let's start the experiment. Okay, here we go. First, let's try. I haven't eaten one of these in like three years. I'm not going to eat them either. I'm going to spit it out. Wheat. It's a roll. Take some uh, bread out. I'm, I'm going to let my... What's disgusting, by the way. Um, I'm going to let my salivary amylase do its thing. So not my bread. Cracker. Gross. Take a little bit. A quarter of that. Protein bar, 33 grams of carbs. Let's see what happens. Oats. That is gross. Let's see what else we got. Something I haven't eaten in a while. <clears throat> this is a chicken strip. Chicken looks good. Got the stuff on the outside. Let's see what happens. What have I got in here?
French fry. It's like a potato wedge. Let's try it. I haven't had one of these in a while. Uh, this is a banana. And if you are diabetic and you eat one of these, your blood sugar is going to go to the moon. Now, it has different simple sugars in it. The diet stick isn't going to be able to detect all of them, but I think there's some glucose in a banana. We're going to find out. I don't eat this food. My son's got diabetes. Whatever he does not eat, I don't eat. I'm spitting this out. I got one more thing. Two more. Rice. Cereal time. I don't know what I'm going to do with this box of cereal. But I know I'm not going to eat it. Let's try a... Uh, Let's try some cheese. Be right back. What we're looking for here, we got some mozzarella. All right. Here's the carbs. Black. Yep. Here's the protein food. Green. Uh-huh. This is a new stick, untouched. Which one is new? The cheese? No. So when you eat the complex carbs, what are you doing? Well, the glucose sticks, glucose detection sticks tell you that you are eating glucose. And let's get one more. That's exactly what uh, you're doing. And if you have a blood sugar meter, you can see it. Because your blood sugar is going to go sky high. So that's pretty much the story. Uh, and uh, I hope that was interesting for you. Um, thanks for watching and uh, now you know that when you're eating complex carbohydrate and I'm not talking about fibrous vegetable you need a lot of vegetables and it's a very little bit, little bit amount of, of carbohydrate mostly fiber spinach, broccoli, and cauliflower most things are slowly digesting you can cover those with insulin but when you're eating bread, cereal, rice, nanas, what else did I have? Chips. You're eating glucose. Thanks for watching. What was that? That just started recording again. Okay. Um. <clears throat> Okay, so let's hear some comments that you have on the video. Okay. Uh, Dr. Dykeman uh, studied in school a lot of easy subjects like uh, quantum field theory, uh, general relativity, uh, Hilbert spaces, uh, and so on. Uh, the easy stuff, the hard stuff like um, uh, biochemistry and organic chemistry, he didn't have time for. So on his presentation, he made a few mistakes. <laughs> I want to correct these mistakes. Yeah. Uh, first of all, we should look at what we've been calling starches and fiber. Starches are polymers of glucose, as Dave pointed out. And remember that the glucose molecule 
uh, can appear as a hexagon and certain corners of the hexagon are joined together to form bonds between the glucose molecules in starch. But those bonds are digestible by enzymes that the human body makes uh, called uh, alpha-glucosidase. And uh, it's interesting that industry has actually developed substances that destroy alpha-glucosidase so that you can't digest starch or that starch digestion would be impaired. So that the American Diabetes Association is simultaneously prescribing huge amounts of starchy substances such as whole grain bread and then at the same time telling the doctors to t prescribe alpha-glucosidase inhibitors to stop them from digesting the bread. The trouble is that the alpha-glucosidase inhibitors, while effective, are not 100% effective, number one. And two, they cause a lot of flatulence. Uh, if you don't know what the medical term flatulence is, my kids used to call it smelly air. So you can eat a lot of whole grain bread. It will have less of an effect on your blood sugar if you take it with an alpha-glucosidase inhibitor. And uh, instead of raising your blood sugar at much, as much, it'll make a lot of smelly air. So that's the ADA approach to nutrition. We'll get into the uh, whole grain breads a little more later. But uh, there are actually two forms of starch. There's uh, amylose, which are straight chains of starch that can pile up and lie close to one another. And there's amylopectin, which are chains of starch that stick to each other like the limbs on a tree. So there's lots of space between the branches of starch chains. The amylopectin, because of all that space, allows digestive enzymes to get in right away and rapidly convert these starches like bread uh, into glucose. The uh, amylose starches, because they're stacked up, they're these long chains that are stacked up one on top of the other, it's hard for enzymes to get in there. It takes a long time to digest those starches. So there are two types of starches. Then when we talk about fiber, we're talking about something unrelated to starches. We're talking about glucose molecules that are bound together with a different kind of bond where the hexose, where the um, uh, hexag hexag hexagonal molecules of glucose stick together, it's a bond that humans cannot digest. And we call this fiber cellulose. And cellulose is a major component of probably all plants. So we see it dramatically in a product called celery. Uh, you could see it uh, almost as dramatically in asparagus, but it's present in leaves and it's present in all vegetables. So the cellulose part of the vegetable is not digestible. That is digestible by intestinal bacteria. And they likewise uh, make methane, which also is smelly air, but uh, usually not a hell of a lot of it. But if you have a vegetarian who's eating mostly a lot of vegetables for their calories, they uh, will complain about uh, flatulence. 
So here we have vegetables like the spinach that Dave was mentioning that are mostly made up of cellulose, which is not digestible. And that is why these products don't raise blood sugar. The glucose molecules cannot be broken apart by the amylase in your saliva or by the amylase in your intestines. So that's a big difference. And it's not just, a, it's not a matter of the slowness of digesting digestible fiber in the spinach. It just ain't digestible. There's, there's very little digestible carbohydrate and that digestible carbohydrate does affect blood sugar slowly uh, but there is not much of it. So we can get away with eating spinach and asparagus and things like that uh, because there's so little digestible carbohydrate in these products. Okay. And there's some value to that. So there's value uh, to the value to eating vegetables is in the nutrients that come along uh, separately from the cellulose. We're interested in the vitamins and the phytochemicals and so on and so forth. And fortunately, we need a relatively small amount of these things uh, so that most people can survive on, let's say, uh, one or two bowls of vegetable of salad a day. Or, uh, remember that our ancestors ate mostly meat or fish and uh, uh, did not go around eating leaves and roots except in hard times. So uh, we don't need a lot of botanical products. We just need a bare minimum to get these phytochemicals. Gotcha. Now, uh, Dave made one other mistake that was major he tested a loaf of bread, but the American Diabetes Association is currently pushing huge amounts of whole grain bread, pretending that it does not affect blood sugar. So I'm going to repeat a study that I did some 20 years ago, maybe 30 years ago, using authentic whole grain bread. Uh, here it is. I hope you can see the label. I'll turn, show you the other side of the label. Yeah. Whole grain. And we're going to try to open the bag. And now I can take a little piece of this brown colored whole grain bread. You can see it, I think. Yeah. And I'm going to put it in my mouth and chew it and mix it with my saliva. I have here a very old vial of diastics. I don't know how old it is, but it's, we've had it in our office for ages. Bread tastes great. I haven't had bread in years and years. I forgot how bread it tastes. Ah, something tastes good. We're going to put it on the strip, which I just did. And when the color develops, we're going to hold it next to uh, an, a, a, a strip where I did not apply the bread. Supposed to take at least a minute for the color change. So we'll come back in a minute. Uh, um, this, well, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll hold the strips. Now you oh, did, it's already changed. You that did, was pretty fast. You did, this on wow. TV, you did this on TV once, correct? Yeah, a long time ago on uh, a program called D Life. Mm -hmm. Well, here are the two strips. That was fast. That was fast. Uh, can you see this? Oh, yeah. 
The black one is where I put the bread. Right. And here we have the American Diabetes Association and the American Association for Diabetes Educators claiming that the whole grain bread won't affect your blood sugar. Yet it dramatically affects your blood sugar uh, if you toast it to get rid of the water, gram for gram, it's almost as if it were pure glucose, the entire mass that remains. Um, whole grain means that the shell of the grain of wheat is, in, is included in the bread. And this amounts to maybe one and a half percent of the mass of the bread. It's almost nothing compared to the huge amount of glucose producing material that uh, you're getting in this bread. So uh, this is a very nice way to uh, kill diabetics over time. Uh, if you have enough of it in one day, you could kill diabetic very, very rapidly. But this is certainly not what diabetics should be eating. And uh, I just read the new dietary guidelines for the USA, which were published in the Journal of the American Medical Association this week. And lo and behold, uh, they're advocating loads of whole grain bread for everybody, which is uh, a major cause of obesity and uh, uh, diabetes. Um, sure, they're saying don't eat sweetened so soft drinks anymore. Well, that's a big concession. Uh, they're still pushing products like whole grain bread. Okay, next subject. 